Here are the starting lineups for VCU. Their backcourt will consist of Ace Baldwin and Jade Nunn up front. Jameer Watkins, Jalen Deloach, and Brandon Johns Jr. He's a transfer from the University of Michigan. For Morgan State, they will go with a three-guard alignment. Isaiah Burke, Malik Miller, the one to watch for Morgan State, and David McCullough, a transfer from Bowie State, a Division II school from the CIAA, along with Khalil Turner and Lewis Jonkum. A transfer from VCU. He also played at Radford as well. And that's not uncommon nowadays in college basketball for kids to be on their third or even their fourth schools. Uh, and that's, that's just because, especially with the transfer portal now, because you don't have to sit out a year. You can just transfer and start playing, and that's why we see so many more players doing it. And, of course, you mentioned Johns for VCU, one of two transfers from Michigan. I said to Mike Rhodes, what did Jawan Howard ever do to you? And he said that actually they recruited both those kids coming out of high school. And so when they were looking for more playing time or in the case of Johns to be a grad transfer, it was natural for them to get in touch with VCU. We also saw the starting fouls on your screen. As mentioned, Jacob played on Mike Rose's first team here at VCU who controlled the toss. And Ace Baldwin and Isaiah Burke will be one of the key matchups to watch out for in the backcourt. And there you see Burke right away bumping Ace Baldwin. That's what they do. Here's Watkins in the corner and gives the Rams an early 3 0 lead. Watkins, a very interesting player for the Rams, sat out last year with an ACL injury, had averaged seven points a game as a freshman. And Mike Rhodes thinks he's going to be one of the keys to this team's success this year. Redshirt sophomore. He went two of five from behind the arc in the opening night win against Manhattan. Here is Burke for Morgan State. And McCullough, the transfer from Bowie State with under 10 to shoot. Jockham has it with three against Deloach. Partially blocked. Miller on the follow and beat the shot clock for Morgan State's first two. And that was one of those cases where a block shot actually helped Morgan State because Miller was open and off the deflection. Might not have been open off a pass. Good ball movement by VCU to break the press, and Johns was fouled inside. First of what will probably be many fouls tonight. They're going, as I said, they will play physical. And on that first possession, you saw contact involving Ace Baldwin, and the officials didn't call it. That's the thing. When you play this way, the officials cannot call the, every single foul. Right. And the, uh, Georgetown under John Thompson Jr. made that style of play famous. They played 94 feet and they played physical. And you couldn't call every foul because otherwise the games would still be going on. There is there's two bumps. Contact and I'm not inside. saying those were fouls, but I'm saying they were definitely bumps. None hit the floor, no whistle. And VCU will get it on the baseline. And the, the early uh, returns... I want to use an election day uh, word, uh, are that the officials are going to let these guys play. And that's good for Morgan State. VCU has 11 to shoot. Here is Deloach. Had the pass deflected by McCullough. Seven to shoot for VCU. Good play by McCullough because Baldwin was open in the corner. You mentioned the Georgetown-type connection. Kevin brought us a Georgetown former assistant. Was an assistant under John Thompson III. Yep. Uh, in, in two, among other years, 2007, when they went to the Final Four. More contact, no whistle. Isaiah Burke in transition. That's goaltending. Goaltending on Watkins. So put at the basket to Isaiah Burke and Morgan State and, has their first lead. And Mike Roach is already pointing at the offensive end of the court. He didn't argue the goaltending call, saying, hey, fellas, Watch, watch the contact because there's plenty of it. By the way, you see the VCU coaches are all in in yellow. Yeah, they look like a bunch of McDonald's French fries sitting <laughs> over there on the bench. Going with the gold and black. Gold and black. The Rams break the press. Making hungry. Here's the lotion side. McCullough the rebound for Morgan State. Good defense there by the Bears. McCullough averaging three rebounds at night this season for Morgan State who has a one-point lead, almost two minutes gone by here in this first half. Backdoor cut is out of bounds to VCU. Good idea, poor execution there. Had a man open on the backdoor cut, but the pass was low. We co talked to Coach Broaddus earlier this week. I joked with him, I was like, you are averaging 101 points a game this season. He stopped me right there, he was <laughs> like, uh, 
Don't even go by that Thursday night win against Penn State Allegheny. Yeah. Focus on the Xavier game they had, which was a competitive game against the Muskies. Over the last few minutes, exactly. And as I said in the open, they turned Xavier over 24 times. That's impressive. Almost a steal by Burke. He could not save it on the baseline. They turn over there. Ten to shoot for the Rams, and they are aggressive on the ball for Coach Broaddus. When you are a team like Morgan State, if you want to play home games in preseason, you have to play D3 teams because most D1 teams aren't going to come and play you. You're going to go play them the way Morgan State's playing here tonight, coming right at us. A steal by Khalil Turner against Johns. Loose ball, saved by Morgan State, right to Ace Baldwin. Baldwin thought about slowing up against Malik, and then goes with the scoop, tipping good by Deloach. That was a great stutter step by Baldwin to get to the basket. He still thinks he got fouled, but Deloach got the tip in from the weak side. 5-4 VCU lead as we're coming up on three minutes gone in the opening half. And you can see already why Morgan State was able to turn Xavier over as much as they did. They're very quick and they're very aggressive. Pass is stolen by none for VCU. Another turnover forced by the Rams. Morgan State able to get back in its half-court defense. Here's Watkins. Around the horn, left open is Baldwin. That was nice ball movement there. That was hockey. Watkins would have gotten a second assist, none the first. Or if the game was in North Carolina, where they always give out at least two assists on every basket. Baldwin shot over 41% from behind the arc last season. He's given the Rams an 8-4 lead. Three and a half minutes gone in the opening half. Miller looks inside to Burke. Had it blocked by Watkins out of bounds. It'll stay with Morgan State with five to shoot as Nick Kern sees his first action to replace Watkins. Back to that last play by Morgan State. There you see Baldwin with the steal. He averaged over two steals a game last year. That's why he's on the all-defensive preseason team. Missed the shot, but Watkins there. Excuse me. Um, it Deloach. was Watkins, right? No, it's a low. Thank you. That, yeah. There with the tip back. Two to shoot for Burke. And John's the rebound for VCU. Got Mitchell. a much better shot than I thought he was going to get. Baldwin, one of the nation's leaders in steals last season, and Miller got called for the foul. Baldwin is a great on-the-ball defensive guard, and especially with the style that VCU likes to play, he, he starts the offense and he starts the defense, and that's why he's so critical. In big games, he's going to have to be on the floor 40 minutes a game. And he, even though Mike Rhodes likes to play his bench. VCU normally has really good point guards that can defend. Here's Nunn attacking the rim. John's the offensive rebound, and a rebound for Morgan State, who looks to run. Here's Burke in transition. Mike Rhodes is all over the officials about the lack of calls on the offensive end. Burke wanted a foul on the other end as David Schreiber sees his first action, the transfer from Hartford for the Rams. Here's Baldwin inside. And the rebound goes to Turner for Morgan State. Burke almost had it stolen away by none. Both teams looking to push the ball every chance they get. VCU did a very good job getting back that time. And both coaches giving an ear fill to the officials about the lack of whistles Mike, here so far. And Mike Rhodes just got warned. Under 10 to shoot for McCullough against Shriver. Down to one, and they can't get it off. No nope, good defense. Coaches love that. They love 30-second violations. And that leads us to a timeout. 15.05 to go. VCU with a four-point lead. There's a good look at the VCU huddle, and head coach Mike Rose talking to his team. Finally, after giving a little bit of an earful to the two officials on that side, on the last dead ball. Yeah, he was he was really all over both Jerry Pollard and Brooks Wade, and about just what we were talking about, how the physical nature of Morgan State's defense. And Morgan State does play physically. I mean, Kevin Broad has said that, uh, and how the game is called. Uh, in terms of fouls is going to be very important and Mike doesn't like what he's seen so far. 
and he was letting the officials know that. And Roger Ayers, the senior guy, decided this was a good time to go get some water because he's smart. Absolutely. 8-4, VCU lead. They're shooting 30% from the field right now. Morgan State, 2 of 7 at 29%. It's actually 286 in Major League Baseball. That's what I was going to say. Close to 300. That's pretty good at that point. That's the way I keep track. His Shriver against Malik. Stripped away by Miller. And he has it in transition. Beautiful pass inside. Yeah. And Mamie is there to finish it. It's a Morgan nice State. pass and a nice catch uh, to gather the ball in and lay it up. Miller averages five and a half assists this season. A nice one there to Mamie to make it an 8-6 VCU lead. Ball See, against Hobbs. What, nice Hobbs look. what Hobbs was doing right there, a lot of officials would have called that a hand check. And a couple of years ago, you remember, that was a point of emphasis, was the hand check. And to make the game less physical, and it's now just completely gone away, the way a lot of so-called rules changes do. That'll probably come up in the next meeting. About a point of emphasis. At some Hand point. Check. Yeah. Well, you can bet Mike Rhodes will be sending this tape uh, to the league to say that this isn't a hand check. That wasn't a foul. Coaches do that all the time. Cameron Hobbs wearing zero is into the game for the first time for Morgan State. Miller tried to draw contact. No whistle. He hits the floor. Up ahead is Kern. Nice Two scores. Move. 10-6 VCU lead, and now Hobbs and that's gonna draws be a foul. And, and, and you got to call that. I mean, there was contact. Hobbs lost control of the ball. That's a foul. And the fans are reacting because they're saying, well, what about the fouls at the other end? That doesn't matter. That was a foul. And we look at it there on replay, and you like... There you see it. Kicked his leg out just a little bit, and that's going to be a foul of Mike Rose on the sideline. Not happy, of course. Voice of the approval, and that's what the official is showing. The knee drew contact. Nick Kearns knee drew the contact, and that's to draw the foul. And a lot of times fans don't understand because they'll say, well, it wasn't intentional. It doesn't matter. Intent, it's not like hockey. Intent doesn't matter. Jockham back in now for Morgan State, uh, and an offensive uh, foul uh, called on Morgan uh, State. That's Cameron Hobbs' first. And I wonder if that wasn't a little bit of a makeup. You can call, call a moving screen on almost any screen. So an official says, well, maybe the, these guys deserve a call. Oh, there's a moving screen. Six and a half minutes gone by in the opening half. VCU with a four-point lead. Morgan State, five turnovers in the last five minutes. So, again, VCU defense creating havoc, creating turnovers early in the half. Baldwin left open again for three. Kind of hesitated there, didn't he? A little bit. No. The loads hit the floor, and Roger Ayers calls him for travel. And usually he who hesitates will miss. That's Shakespeare, right? Yep. Yeah. But he who hesitates is lost, right? Well, I was paraphrasing. I, I, I don't pretend to copy Shakespeare. He was a little Not better too than much. me. I knew very little Shakespeare, just enough to get by. <laughs> Morgan State hanging around. You mentioned that at the top of the broadcast. John, keeping the crowd out of the game, and for the most part, they have been somewhat quiet as Malik Miller could finish, and it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Morgan State. Yep, they, they, they have kept him out of the game, and Part of the reason for that is even when VCU has turned them over, it hasn't led to any fast break dunks or, or anything spectacular that would get the crowd going. There are two kinds of turnovers, as you know. There's a dead ball turnover where you get to set up your defense, and then there's a the live ball turnover, which can lead to havoc. And Will Thomas, the junior from Baltimore, switched it home over David Schreier to bring the Bears to within two. If I had a dollar for every good player who's come out of Baltimore, I wouldn't be sitting here tonight. <laughs> I'd be on my island somewhere. That's one of those hot that is not talked about a lot. Yeah. yeah. Partly because D.C. is such a hot bed right. right nearby. Zeb Jackson has it with under 10. Here's Shriver. And a foul inside against Morgan State. That's going to be Will Thomas's first. And again, that's why if you're Mike Rhodes... You talk to the officials during a timeout. Obviously, you can't get back the calls that came before, but you can work on the calls that will come soon. He's a veteran. Started, oh. His first head coaching job, he was 28 years yeah. old. Yeah, but Randolph making up the road in Ashland. Huh? Nice look. 
led Deloach a little bit too long, but he got it back with nine to shoot, and now we've got a whistle and an Ooh, offensive that's foul. that's an interesting call. Deloach draws it. Yankum, the former Ram and Highlander, drew that offensive foul on Jalen Deloach. I honestly thought he was moving, but... He, he was squared up. Sometimes an official will call a charge when the guy's squared up, but moving. Now one of the officials talking to a fan yeah, to our left. Yeah, did not seem to be a friendly exchange. No, it wasn't. I think Fans can be thrown out, by the way. And I've seen I think that he happen. gave him a warning yeah. and said, one more time, you will be thrown out. Rams come with a little That's bit of a trap. Court. Why wasn't that back? Oh, deflection. deflection. Okay. I didn't see it. Yankum has it against Johns. The chump hook over Johns is short. And Johns the rebound. Good defense there by Johns, but not good ball handling. Here's Malik Miller over Johns and scores. And Malik Miller's not going to miss two layups. That's his fourth point. And we're tied at 10 at the 11.30 mark of this first half. And if you're Morgan State right now, you got to feel pretty good right. coming into hostile territory and playing even with the Rams as a foul is called on the perimeter. A lot more fouls being called now, aren't there? Yeah, absolutely. Time out on the floor. Tied at 10 here at the Single Center. We'll be back after this. Yeah, I mean, the score is even and the stats are mostly even, although stats eight and a half minutes into a game aren't going to tell you that much yet. But you said it best. That 10 10 or eight and a half minutes in here, Morgan State should feel good. They've kept the crowd out of it. The band is into it. Uh, but uh, the crowd has, has not gotten turned on yet the way a crowd can get turned on in here. And, and that's exactly what Morgan State wants. I will say this what Mike Rhodes did during the first TV timeout when he talked to the officials about how physical the game was worked because they've been calling it a lot tighter since then. And, and there's another whistle. Yeah, and that, that's 16 fouls on Morgan State, I think. Five or six. Five. Six. Six. Yeah, you're right. Six. Yeah, I thought it said five before. VCU with two right now. That means VCU shoots the rest of the half. Last foul to give. VCU shot just 57.6% in their win against Manhattan from the line on Monday night. Yeah, you got to shoot better than that to win games as the season goes on. Zeb Jackson back in for VCU. He switches a triple. Always trust the lefty. It's my motto in life. He was one for four from behind the arc against the Jaspers Monday night. That has given VCU a three-point lead. One thing that Morgan State's benefit, the fact that they have not had a lot of live ball turnovers. Cameron Hobbs guilty of another offensive foul, his second. Another moving screen. And again, as you point out, it's a, it's a turnover, but it's a dead ball turnover. Which I think Co Coach Broaddus will take yeah. as opposed to that live ball turnover exactly. because in that, then the crowd can get involved and get back in it. Yeah. And gets to set up his defense. Which has been mostly man here in his half. Yeah, he's mostly a man-to-man -man guy, as is Mike Rhodes. Shriver inside. That was a good shot. He just couldn't finish. It'll stay with VCU. Shriver, as I mentioned, a transfer from Hartford. Led the American East Conference in three-pointers made last season. I saw him play a lot last last year, and he can shoot the ball. He's got a clean look there. See, it makes him look good. It doesn't happen very often. He shoots a career 40-plus percent from behind the arc. He's giving VCU a six-point lead. It's a nice setup there, too. Uh, nice feed to Will Thomas. Sure was. I think he took it away from Isaiah Burke, and Thomas scores his fourth point. That's twice they've had really nice backdoor cut looks. The first one they didn't convert. This one they did. A little bit of a press. Nice catch. Here's Kern. Ball went over Burke. Turner, the rebound for Morgan State. Looked up the head to Rob Lawson, who scores, and he's fouled. That was some pass. Some gutsy pass, throwing it 60 feet. Rob Lawson, the freshman from Capitol Heights, Maryland, can pull Morgan State to within one if he connects on the three-point play. Here's that last basket by Lawson. Nice, as I said, nice pass, nice catch, nice finish. Nice everything. 
as you said, Capitol Heights, Maryland, Prince George's County. Kevin Broadus still lives in Silver Spring, right near Prince George in uh, Montgomery County. His last job before he got the Morgan State job was in Maryland. Yeah. He's got a ton of Division One experience. Speaking of Coach Broadus, Lawson completes the three-point play. He averages 11 points a night, one of six players in double figures for Morgan State. As there's Broadus on the sideline, we mentioned a part of that 2007 Georgetown Final Four team, headed up by Coach John Thompson III. Beat North Carolina in the regional final yeah. in New Jersey. Came from eight points down the last two minutes to win that game. I had Georgetown in the, my bracket that year. Did you well good for you. I was a happy man when they won that game. <laughs> Here's Deloach inside, draws a foul. And Jeff Green still in the NBA. That's right. And Georgetown got a win. Uh, Earlier this Coppin week, State Coppin State in overtime. In overtime in Miak, and then beat yep. Wisconsin Green Bay yep. earlier today. Patrick Ewing is following his mentor's example with the schedule this year. The Loach at the line, four of seven from the stripe in the win against Manhattan. Of course, when you lost 21 in a row, you want to schedule some wins. He finally got that off his off his shoulder. Yep. But I, I mentioned that to Coach Broadus about Miak play Miak teams playing against either. I mid majors or power five schools and, and the passion and the pride they have and playing against those schools. We saw with Coppin State. We're seeing it right now with Morgan. Well, as a coach, you can't approach it like, well, this is a guarantee game. Right. We're getting seventy-five thousand dollars for being here. You have to approach it with your players as this is an opportunity to make some noise nationally. None the rebound off the Miller miss. And he said, We're coming to win. And, and on the floor we called the timeout, I think, yeah. Mamie gets the steal and keeps possession with the timeout as we watch it again. Mamie playing good defense on Deloach. Got in front of him, got possession, and then smartly called timeout before he could be tied up. Though it would have been Morgan State ball on yep. the tie-up, but they still have the arrow as a result of calling timeout. But um, the, um, you know, the, the MEAC has a proud history. Yes. I mean, when Fang Mitchell was the coach at Coppin State, they beat a third-seeded South Carolina team in the NCAA tournament. They also beat Maryland in Gary Williams' first year. That was 33 years ago. I'm not sure Gary Williams has recovered from that loss yet. But I think Hampton, he's still a little upset about it. Yeah, what happened was in the MEAC. They beat they South Carolina. Had a couple that was good a wins, yeah. They and did. Norfolk State, what they've done now with Coach Rob Jones... I'll tell you what, Rob Jones is a really good coach. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a strong basketball tradition in the NBA. And Coach Broadus is hoping that filters down to Morgan State this season. Right now, they're trailing only by two as we're at nine minutes here in the first half. Here's Turner looking to Namie. The jump hook over Deloach and Watkins, the rebound for VCU. That was good went hands by Watkins to kind of mess up the post up. Fat Phillips into the game for VCU, the young man from Verina High School here in Richmond. And another turnover by VCU, Morgan State. A chance to tie or take the lead on this possession. You ever seen a player nicknamed Fats who was fat? Mm, not to my recollection. Me neither. He told me. That was, a, that was a nickname given to him when he was younger. Mm -hmm. Tubby Smith got his nickname because he liked to take baths a lot. He's certainly not Tubby. Former assistant here. And a steal by Jaden Nunn. Bounce pass to Zeb Jackson. He nice scores. pass and catch. I think the most underrated skill in basketball may be catching the ball, especially on the run. Especially with a pass like that. That's exactly, a tough that's pass. what I mean. Yeah. Jackson with five. Here's McCullough left open. Mm, too open. Billups the rebound for VCU. Sometimes you can be too open. You have too much time to think about the shot. Better to just catch and shoot. Here's Watkins. Skip pass to Zeb Jackson for three. That was almost a goal 10 by Turner. Well, Watkins was trying to tip it in because he saw it was coming up short. Could have been an offensive interference that way as well. Under eight to go in the first half, and Morgan State down by four. McCullough loses it. Zip Jackson has it. Good hands by Watkins there. He created the steal, even though Jackson ended up with the ball. And Watkins misses on the three. 
Morgan Rams, State the rebound. Rams can't buy one from outside right now. Only two of their first four, I think they made one since. Yeah. Right now, four of eight from behind the arc. And they Morgan made two since I was wrong. Morgan State, 0 of three. Here's Burke. Jackson the rebound. Got caught in the air. Never Burke passed. got it back. Misses the tip. And there's Miller inside. And Jackson just committed a cardinal mistake. You never throw the ball back toward your own basket. And that led to the steal and eventually the basket. Miller now with six. That leads the way for Morgan State, and they're back within two, under seven to go in the opening half. Here's Watkins on the baseline drive, poked away by Turner. Miller now on the move, three on two. Turner left open for the lead. The follow by Namie, and Miller got it back, missed it. McCullough inside, draws another foul. That'll make Mike Rhodes unhappy. Four cracks at the basket for Morgan State. Timeout on the floor. McCullough will shoot free throws when we come back as the Bears trail by two. BCU with a two-point lead, and Morgan State with a chance to tie on this last trip. And we see Morgan State crashing the glass. Multiple opportunities, John, and David McCullough will get rewarded with two free throws. Yeah, I mean, they're really going after the ball. We said before the game they wanted this game to be physical. They wanted there to be a lot of fouls. They've committed eight. BCU's only committed four. But the physical play, I think, has affected BCU's shooting. They're not shooting the ball particularly well. Now, Morgan State hasn't made a three either. But that's the way they play. They play to get the ball inside. And i gotta got to get this in right now before we start. I know your son is here tonight. He is your here. wife. And my daughter, Jane, who's 12, okay. just texted me to tell me that I'm doing a great job. Wow. So as long as I've got her thinking I'm doing say, a good job, I'm, I'm fine. If you got the approval from the daughter, I'm, you're good I'm to go. I'm good to go. Did, did she mention if I did a good job? She said that other guy's good, too. That other guy. Okay, yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that. David McCullough at the free throw line, the transfer from Bowie State. He was their team's leading scorer last year at Bowie in the connection with Coach Broadus. He played at Bowie State in the late 80s as McCullough gets Morgan State to within one. Well, and as we said, he's lived and coached in the D.C. area for much of his career. Coached at four different D.C. teams. Actually had a chance to go to Howard several years ago, decided to go to Morgan State. So I said to him, you got to get George Mason off you or something. It's like Fran Dunphy in Philadelphia, who played at LaSalle, coached at Temple, coached at Penn, is now coaching at LaSalle, got a graduate degree at Villanova. He needs to do something with St. Joe's. I was going to say, what happened with St. Joe's? I know. He hasn't gotten to St. Joe's yet. Mr. Big Five. McCullough made one of two. We come back the other way as Morgan State was called for the foul. That's nine team fouls on the Bears. And now Shriver is at the line for a one and one. Did not attempt a free throw in the win against Manhattan on Monday night. These one and ones will be critical. And was in and out. As I said. Mentioned they were 57.6% from the stripe in that win. That's a, that was a stat that Rose did not like. With good reason. Got to be above 70 to 75. Got to be at least 70. 75 is good. And they were right around 70 last year, which was near the bottom of the A-10. Under 10 to shoot now for Morgan State, who can take the lead on this possession. Here is Miller against Watkins. That was a nice move. Got his own miss and scores. Eight for Miller and Morgan State back in front by one. We mentioned in the pregame that Miller is the guy you got to watch on the boards. Coach Broad has called him his junkyard dog. Yeah. But he gets after it and he, set, he sets the tone the way Ace Baldwin sets the That's tone exactly for the Rams. Right. He's, he, he's the, the straw that stirs Morgan State's no drink. No question. And Ace on the bench right. No, he's not. I <laughs> just saw him. Here's Shriver left open for three. Had a good look and Miller the rebound for Morgan State. Here's Miller against Johns. Follow no good. Ball on the floor. Who's got it? It's a tie-up, and the Morgan arrow favor, make, favors Morgan State. Now that's something I know Broadus is going to love, the, the activity around the rim. Without Multiple question. guys. Because they're not the an outside shooting right. team, so they need to score that way. 
and I think VCU needs to get more touches for their point guard. They need to get Ace Baldwin more involved and get him to start the offense more frequently. Morgan State with a one-point lead. Both teams now shooting 33% from the field as we're coming up on five to go in the opening half. This game is not going to the tape is not going to the Hall of Fame. Nice passing, but too far ahead to Mamie and out of bounds. Good idea, but Mamie was zigging when none was expecting him to zag. Or Hobbs, excuse me. There's Kevon Wiggins, the transfer from Lamar Community College in for Morgan State. Under five to go, VCU trailing by one. They're in a scoring drought of over almost three and a half minutes. The reason they only trail by one is because their defense has been good. They have four so far. Nine Morgan State turnovers, and Watkins gives VCU the lead on his fifth point. Well, Mike Rhodes will take that basket. I'm not sure Watkins didn't walk twice. There's the trap in the backcourt. Baldwin now has it and knocked out of bounds by Burke. And he's looking for the open shot there. But good play, good double team by the Rams. And now we're going to, officials are going to consult here. On whose they did ball signal it that it was VCU's ball. Now we will have a conference. It did. Roger Harris said VCU ball. And it's going to be VCU ball, really? I think. Or is it, what are they calling? Oh, it's the, it's about the, the shot, shot clock. Because it went reset. back to 20. It went back to 20. And, and I'm not sure it should be because the, the VC, I guess they're saying that VCU had possession. That they Ace had Baldwin possession. had possession. Yeah. And when ball goes out of bounds without a shot going up, clock goes to 20. Not sure why. Usually the shot clock, now it's 27. Yeah. Usually the shot clock only goes to 20 after a missed shot that's rebounded. And they went back to 20 because they were thinking it was a shot. At right, and it wasn't. It was just a deflected pass. So good call by the officials. And a quick whistle on Mamie to give Johns two free throws. That is team foul number 10. Fouls are 10-4. So Mike Rhodes' little lecture of the officials didn't hurt. Maybe next day, Ball Morgan State may do that. Coach Broaddus may talk to the official, see if he can get some calls his way. Can't hurt as long as he does it the way Mike did it without getting teed up. Johns at the stripe. He scored 13 in the win against Manhattan on Monday night. 117 games played at Michigan. He was actually recruited by John Beeline. He coached at that school further yeah. Down the road a little bit. Yeah. Pretty good coach. Pretty good coach. Never an assistant coach in his entire right. career. Took Michigan to the national championship game a few years ago. Twice. Yep. Took them twice. Here's Miller. Good first step and blocked by Watkins. Watkins first. has long arms. Plays bigger than he is. Seven, under seven to shoot for Morgan State. Now down to two. To walk. Good call. And that brings us to our final media timeout. VCU back in front by three, 23 to 20. We're back on Masson 2 and ESPN Plus. 3.57 left in the first half, and VCU are in a battle right now as they only lead by three against Morgan State. Mike Rose, the head coach of the Rams in his sixth season, 103 wins here at VCU. And Kevin brought us in his fourth year at Morgan State. 43 and 39. And 43 and 39 is a lot better than you think because, as I said, his team has to start off every year playing five or six yeah. of these guarantee games. They will play six this year. They will play one home game non conference against a D1 team. The rest will be against D3 teams. So that ain't easy. And they have a date in December right before Christmas. They got to go to Tempe and play Arizona. That'll be a lot of fun. At, at least the, the weather will be good. Yeah, at the McHale Center, which is, as we talked about with the Seagull Center, that's one of the hardest places, places to it play. It is. I, I've gone, I've, I date back to Steve Kerr there. Okay. So. Nice look inside by Watkins to Johns for the finish. Watkins has quietly played a very good first half here at both ends. Looks very comfortable. Back in the swing of things after missing all of last season with the torn ACL. Still wearing that knee brace, but walking, not walking, moving just fine. Rams by five. 
Jockham back in for Morgan State. Burke for three. In front of Ace Baldwin to pull Morgan State to within two. In front of uh, the out-of-bounds line. That was an NBA three, and that's the first one they made. He Burke, needed it. 37.5% from behind the arc. Averaging 13 points a night. Morgan State down by two. Inside three minutes to go. Nice look by Baldwin to Shriver. Extra pass to Nunn for three. Watkins an offensive rebound. That hit underneath the backboard right to Khalil Turner. And they're looking to run whenever they can. Miller to Turner for the lead. Nope. Shriver the rebound for VCU. I'm not sure Turner would make that. After they'd missed six in a row, they were going to make two in a row. That is not his strong suit. No, it's not. That, it's the old coach's line. Why'd you take that shot? Well, I was open, coach. Well, there's a reason you were open. Here is Johns. Oh, that's offensive. No. Wow. Got a block. I, I guess he was. He never got position, and Roger Ayers called it a block. That's a sign of an experienced official. He knows the difference between a block and a charge when I don't. Watch the replay here. Good shot, fake. See, and he never got position. He never got his feet down. He was squared, but he didn't have position. Good call by Roger Ayers. Jacob now with two personal fouls. As that Johns is back in the line for VCU. Those free throws could bring rain. And he might have to be shooting those on Monday. <laughs> I have a feeling he'll be shooting them tomorrow. Nominee back in for Morgan State. When I was at Indiana the year I did the book with Bob Knight, mm -hmm. Steve Alsford missed two free throws in a game on Saturday. Next day was Super Bowl Sunday. I walked in the gym at 2 o'clock. Alford was there all by himself. Shooting free throws. Shooting free throws. Johns may do that tomorrow. He missed both there. Yeah, he might. But Watkins kept possession for VCU, and Kern turns it over. A lot of turnovers in this game. And again, Officially 12 for VCU, 11 for Morgan State so far. Coming up on two minutes to go in the half. VCU is right on the same pace as Xavier. On Monday night, in terms of turnovers. Not what Mike Rhodes wanted. Nice pass. Khalil Turner with the finish. He's going to get warned because he, he batted at the ball. Turner did. Delay a game warning on yeah. Turner. Yep. And Roger Ayers saying no more. That'll be a tech the next time. And we're tied again. You look up at the scoreboard, and Morgan State has done what they said they were going to do in this first half, and that's keep the game close. Not make this attract me, and you do not hear a lot of the student section here at VCU because right now Morgan State has kept this game close and now tied at 25. Well, has there been a spectacular play for VCU? Not really. No. And, they, and they have not shot the ball especially. And well. not a lot of live ball turnovers yep. that can start a break. Ball would just got it across before the 10 second count. Here's none against Lawson. I love about Baldwin is his vision. Always knows where the other four guys are. Tough shot there. Ball tipped around, and Turner has it for Morgan State. A chance to retake the lead for the Bears. This is the guy they want with the ball. Miller's got eight so far in his half. That leaves all scores. Average just under 13 last year, as you said. The only returning starter. Ten to shoot for Morgan State. Turner, the step back three. As you Watkins. said, not his strength, and he's taking two in a row. Now, the clock was down, but it wasn't under five. Toby Lowell from London is into the game and hands it to Shriver. Shriver will make threes. He will also take them, which is a good way to make them. And they just used their second timeout, struggling to get the ball in bounds. That is not a timeout you want to take in the last minute of the first half. Driver with six off the feed from the wall. Catch and shoot for David Schreiber. And you mentioned you've seen him play when he was at Harvard. I did, yes. And and that that was his game. And catch and shoot. And as with most shooters, they're more effective when they just catch and shoot and don't have time to think. Better off to have a defender coming at you and know you gotta release it right away than to just stand there wide open. How many times do you see guys who are wide open and they kind of hesitate a little bit and then they miss? 
in 106 games coming into this season. He made 304 three-pointers and shot 40.7% from distance at that point. Played on Hartford's NCAA team two years ago. First and probably last NCAA tournament team in Hartford history since the genius president has decided to drop to D3. Forget about coach. what's doing best for the so-called student-athletes. And, and John Gallagher just quit. Yeah, right before Monday. the start of the season. Yep. VCU up by three, under a minute to Good go. defense. Jaden Nunn forced that turnover, and the Rams can make it either a five- or a six-point lead. Nunn was stepped back for three. I didn't mind that shot because they were going to, for two for one. With Here's the Lawson. Too strong. Rebound by Morgan State. That's Miller again, and will be rewarded with two free throws. Now, I understand Miller going back up with it because that's instinct. But it might have been better for them to throw the ball out and hold for the last shot. VCU does get the ball first in the second half. Two free throws for Malik Miller, shooting 80% this season. So there's a good look at Jaden Nunn. He was one of the top theft. The thiever, thievery players in the uh, A-10 last year. Thieves. Thieves. <laughs> Thieveries. Thievery players. Yeah, thieves. Why is it that, that football announcers now say all the time that a team is matriculating down the field? Why do they say that? Try to pull the old Hank I, 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 I don't get it. I was listening to the Navy-Notre Dame game today, and the Navy announcers are both friends of mine, but they kept saying Navy was matriculating the ball down the field. Notre Dame was matriculating down the foot. Yeah, matriculate means you're going to college or school. Under 10 to go for VCU in this first half. They want one shot as they lead by one. It's going to be a tough one. Baldwin. And he thought he got fouled. And that ends the first half. And it's been a very competitive first half through 20 minutes. And Morgan State in it, down by one. And Kevin Broaddus should feel very good about the, those first 20 minutes. And you can bet Mike Rhodes is going to have a few words for his team in that locker room. And despite not playing their best, Rams are up by one. We'll start halftime activities here from the Siegel Center right after this on Masson 2 and on ESPN. Here at the school, we're about to begin the second half with VCU holding on to a one-point lead. Sean Robertson, along with John Feinstein, our entire Ram crew, VCU Ram Unlimited, clear here in attendance tonight at the stew. And a whistle and an offensive foul 10 seconds into the half. I was away from the ball. I didn't see it. Well, the DeLoach indication is that Deloach threw an elbow trying to get position in the post. Three on Deloach right now. Mike Rhodes on the other side of the court saying, what? What happened? He wasn't watching in the post either because Ace Baldwin had the ball at the top of the key. Starting five for both teams on the floor to begin the half. Backdoor cut to McCullough who missed the slam. Wow. None the long rebound. That was perfect play. Perfect pass, perfect cut, imperfect dunk. McCullough almost forced a tie up on that pass. That was a good screen by Deloach there. Wow. Here's none with 10 to shoot. Johns for three. McCullough the rebound for Morgan State. Down by one, a chance to retake the lead on this possession. Had a bunch of chances to do that and succeeded only once, I think. Turner looks to Yonk come inside and he's given Morgan State the lead. Now they've succeeded twice. 12.3 points per game. This season for Lewis and Morgan State with a one point lead. Backdoor cut to none. Knocked out by Turner. It'll stay with VCU as Shriver comes back in to replace Deloach. Quick sub there for Mike Rhodes. Trying not to get that fourth foul right. on and your starting center. Exactly right. He picked up a third one in 10 seconds. 15 to shoot for VCU. Here is Johns. Nice step and scores. Uh, that was... What Mike Rhodes was looking to get from Johns, the ability to score from the low post there. He made a nice move there. Johns now with six. Rams back in front. Here's Yonkum stripped by Johns. Good defense there. Morgan State will keep possession. 
Still 19 seconds on the clock, so they have plenty of time. McCullough with the inbound. Good denial by none. Morgan State had a difficult time on that baseline to try to get it in. Nothing wrong with deflections. Coaches keep track of deflections for a reason because it messes up the other team's offense. They have to start all over again. Mike Rose told us that this week. Yonkum nice inside move. and scores. And that was a mistake by Johns. He gave up the baseline. Hoppling a little bit coming down the court. Four points now for Yonkum. Morgan State back in front by one. Inside, they left Johns open. And somebody turned their head there. Johns with eight. And VCU in his back and forth affair, lead by one. Here's Miller. Short. Yonkum the offensive rebound. Shriver kept it alive. Watkins, none, and stolen by Turner. Bodies hit the floor. None slow to get up. Turner down court, finishes with two hands. Well, as you said, none went down and never got up. So Morgan State took advantage. And Morgan State back ahead by one. Fans are booing, but the officials are not supposed to stop the game when the other team has the ball. Shriver for the lead. That was a tough shot because he wasn't squared to the basket. Morgan State with a one-point lead. He Burke is squared. From distance, halfway down, Miller lost it out of bounds. That would have been a big bucket for Morgan State because they've never led by four points in this game. The wall now in for Johns as we look at that last play. Johns, as I said, limping a little bit. And here you saw the steal that led to the fast break. The yeah, he's going to be attended. Johns going to be attended to it. It looks like he's going to. He's going to the locker room. Yep. Or well, he's going to the tunnel area. Now back. Yeah, he's going to get bike. on the bike and try to loosen up that leg. Another VCU turnover. There have been quite a few tonight, haven't there? 15. For VCU, 12 for Morgan State. Regardless of the outcome, Mike Groves is going to have a lot to work on with his team between now and Tuesday against Arizona State in Brooklyn. Defense! Defense! Burke hits the floor and is called for travel. Yeah, and if it's not a foul, it's got to be a walk, one or the other. Roger Ayers on that call. 16-44 in the second half, and Morgan State... Not going away in this game, leading by a point. Apparently not. Somebody forgot to tell them that this is a guarantee game. Shriver breaks the press. Watkins kept control. And Baldwin now maintains it. Years ago, when Lafayette played at Villanova, when Steve Lapis was Villanova's coach, so that's a while ago. Yeah. Watkins Tough. got fouled on the three-point shot by McCullough. Drew that foul. McCullough not happy with it, but... You could see the hand on the wrist. But Lafayette went in and beat Villanova in a guarantee game. And when they shook hands, Steve Lapis said to Fran O'Hanlon, I don't think you understand the concept of a guarantee game. We guarantee you money. You guarantee us a win. I don't think Kevin Broadus believes in the second part of that either. Not at all. And Villanova earlier this week lost to Temple. To Temple. Yeah. It's a huge win for Temple. They hadn't beaten Villanova in eight or nine years. And another missed free throw Aaron, by VCU. Probably the biggest win for Aaron McKee Yeah, since Former he took Howell. over. Played in the NBA for 13 years. More missed free throws by... It's two straight on this uh, trip by Watkins. Yep. And he played college for the late John Chaney. Played for John Chaney, which means he has many stories to tell. Yes, he does. You probably have a few stories. I've got a few to tell <laughs> about John. Mostly involving him yelling at me. Watkins gets one of three. I never admired a man more who I disagreed with all the time. And there's a mistake on the inbounds pass. And Watkins contorting inside. And so Watkins ends up with three after missing two free throws. And gives VCU a two-point lead. That That's the kind of play, if you're trying to pull an upset like this, you can't afford. VCU trying to turn up the full-court defense. Miller gets his own miss. Second try doesn't go, yeah. and, and out of bounds to VCU. Ball. And what happens sometimes as we go to timeout here, when you're pressing and a team breaks the press is they take a quick shot, and that's what happened there. 
VCU with a two-point lead here on Masson 2 and on ESPN+. Plus. Our halftime stats were provided by the Virginia Credit Union, home of the VCU Black and Gold MasterCard. We got to get one of those for the holiday season. I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Morgan State giving a little uh, pressure to VCU. I'm looking at the updated stats, and I'm trying to figure out a place where one team is separated from the other. There is none. Everything is almost almost even. 39% shooting VCU, 35% shooting for the Rams, 15 turnovers to 14 turnovers, which is too many for both teams. Now Morgan State comes with a press after, out of the timeout. Hadn't seen that a lot in this game. Well, it's good coaching. You change things up in a timeout. Now Baldwin going up against Hobbs. Baldwin with the right hand. Nice play, and he wants a foul. Ace has not been particularly happy with the officiating tonight. Just a second made field goal of this game. Be because of the way he plays, he's going to have a body on him almost all the time. Rams That's by four. Shriver with the block. Turnover anyway. Here's none up ahead. And Two baskets in a row. And none got hit hard, and he's still down. And that's really actually too bad for VCU because the crowd was starting to get into it, and then none doesn't get up, and things get quiet, as you would expect. Let's watch it again. It started with the block by Shriver. Now see, I thought he had walked, and then Shriver gets the steal. Quick pass up court to none, who makes a nice move to the basket. Scores, and both players go down there. I think Nunn's okay, just kind of shaken up. So he's going to go to the bench for Zeb Jackson. That was Nunn's first made field goal of this game. He was 0 for his first five. Rams now on a 7-0 run. It's the first real run they've had in the game. Six-point lead, five minutes gone in the second half. Another deflection there. Miller had his pass deflected. Ten to shoot. And now they have to rush their offense a little bit because of those two deflections. Another deflection and, they and end up with a steal. steal. Jackson will get two free throws. And that would have brought the house down if he made the layup. Really nice look up pass by Ace Baldwin there off the turnover. We mentioned he was one of the nation's leaders in steals. A season ago, he was third in the country at two and a half a night. Speaking of Ace Baldwin. Best on the ball defender VCU's had since Briante Weber, who was about as good as anybody. And if not for his knee injury his senior year, he, he would have been the all-time steal leader. Absolutely. Yep, no doubt. So here's Zeb Jackson, another transfer from Michigan. We talked about that earlier. He was a member of the Elite Eight team. In the bubble in Indianapolis in 2021. He played his high school ball at Monteverdi Academy. One of the premier high schools in the country. Teammate of Vince Williams, am I right about that or no? I believe so. Yeah. Big billboard coming into town of Vince Williams in his Grizzlies uniform. Yeah. Last two years, the VCU's had players drafted by the Grizzlies. Vince got picked up in the second round of this past draft. Mm -hmm. Of course, Bones Highland was a first-round pick, averaged 10.9 points per game last season. Burke for three. Thought about it, and it popped out. Shriver inside has the rebound. Miller came up with a deflection, now guarding Baldwin tightly. Boy, you, you, I mean, how is that not a foul? And they finally get it. Yeah. I mean, that, he was on him all the way down the court. And not a shooting foul. The official said no, that's it was, a good call. Said it was on the floor. No. <laughs> the foul was right, right in front of us. <laughs> was where the foul started. The kind of started in the backcourt yeah. and worked up. Ace there campaigning for a shooting foul, but... He wasn't going to get it. 9-0 VCU run over the last two and a half minutes, and Shriver looks to add to it, but can't. Not Turn of the rebound. Not sure they needed that quick shot guarded. There's a difference between catch and shoot and catch and shoot when you're guarded. 
It's not a big difference, but it's a difference. Who gets Morgan State going on this possession? A, a whistle stops the ball away from the ball. And Kevin Broaddus better be careful because he's out on the court. And he does not want to get teed up at this moment. Well, he's mad at Lawson, his guard. I guess he didn't run the right play. Well, but you're mad. You're on the court. You can get teed up at any moment. And then the official has the right to do that. I looked at one of the officials. He kind of signaled to the assistants to kind of reel him in. Yeah. Bring him back on the sideline. Yeah, well, good job there by Brooks Wade understanding that Broadus wasn't yelling at him. Because he was very animate to Rob Lawson, his freshman guard from Capitol Heights, Maryland. This is a key moment in the game. And that's why Broadus was so animated. And Lawson nails the three to get... Morgan State within five. I guess the tough love worked. That's only, I think that's only their second three. Two of ten uh, in the game, and that broke a 9-0 run. And that was a key one, key shot, two or three. VCU up five here in the game. Here's Jackson. Nice spin in the lane. And it popped in. Tough shot there. Always difficult going right when you're a lefty shooter, but he he did it. He did it well. Jackson leading VCU with nine, and it's a seven-point Ram lead. That's good defense there. By John's coming all the way out. Burke out high with under ten to shoot. Or cut to Turner with the finish. Awfully nice pass there. And a steal almost by Lawson. It'll stay with VCU. And that, that was a mental mistake that almost became two mental mistakes for Shriver. Lost his man on the back cut and then almost gave it away on the inbounds. And he's going to go to the bench as is Ace Baldwin. But I think at 12.24 on the clock, I think he's just going out to the TV timeout. Get a little breather. Yeah. And a little extra time. None now back in and will run the point on this trip, leading by five. When Ace was out with that torn Achilles, none started at point guard. Did a very good job. He did. Broach pointed out that this was the first summer since he got here that Ace Baldwin was healthy. That's true. He wasn't coming off surgery. And you can tell the difference. Yeah, no, you can see it. That was a 13, a 10 preseason selection. And a turnover, which is just what Mike Rhodes did not want with Ace Baldwin on the bench. 16 turnovers now for VCU. Next whistle will be TV timeout. Turner for three. Oof, they've hit two in a row. Khalil Turner, the junior from Philly, with his ninth point. Has Morgan State within two inside 12 minutes. You go 27 minutes, make one three, and then in a minute and a half, you make two. That's basketball. Good defense there. Deloach back in now for VCU. Mm. Taken away by Morgan State, and now Deloach caused the tie up, and that arrow will favor Morgan State, who has a chance to tie or take the lead again on the next timeout. With 11-21. VCU up by two. Forty-three, forty-one. VCU leading by two. Sean Robinson, John Feinstein, Corsair. You mentioned it right before we went to break. Morgan State ain't going away. They have no. They have no desire to go away. <laughs> and one of the, like I said, it's really hard to tell much from the stats besides the score. But Morgan State's out rebounding VCU. And we said before 29 25, we said before the game that was going to be critical for them to, to get keep VCU off the offensive boards, which they've done a, a good job with for most of the game. In fact, VCU only has eight offensive rebounds. Um, and that that's a stat along with the turnovers that Mike Rhodes is not going to be thrilled with, regardless of how this game finishes. How about this stat? Malik Miller has one fewer offensive rebound. Than the that team. He, that Vishu has as a team. And we seven. talked about him as a rebounder before the game, too, didn't we? Yep. He has a double double, 10 points, 10 rebounds. Oh. Ace Baldwin got fouled. Almost, yeah. On that deflection, Will Thomas 
will be called for the foul, his third. That was a good foul, though, yeah. because if he doesn't foul, Ace is going the length of the court for a layup. You mentioned about the deflections and coaches keeping that stat. Mike yep. Rose keeps that stat. He says between 30 to 35 deflections is a good game. Yeah, for and, him. And, and, and most coaches who track deflections will tell you if you get 40, you're going to win the game. Yeah. He also mentioned when Shaka was here, I think he had it at about 40 deflections. Yeah. With that havoc defense, that was known to do that on a regular basis. I think some of those were Shaka, though. Because he fouled. was so involved on the yeah, bench. Yeah. And he got fouled shooting three. Lawson showed a little bit of disgust on that. He gets the foul. His second ball went three free throws with VCU leading by two. Was six of eight from the line in Monday's win against Manhattan. Scored 15 in that game. Well, at this moment, VCU is only six of 12. Good stroke there by Baldwin. Nine assists in the win. Also had three steals and a bunch of deflections against the Jaspers Monday night. Hard to see Steve, uh, Manhattan without Steve Massiello coach. Yeah. Been there so long. And a tough situation for Coach Stores to be thrust into that role about three weeks before the start of the season. Well, Tom Devitt took over at Hartford the day the season started. Talk about a tough role. One more free throw for Baldwin, the junior from Baltimore. 27th straight start. One out of three. Still, that's just not good enough. Yeah. Especially for him. 44-41. Ooh, that looked Almost like a push off twice. The one, and Baldwin and he gets the steal. steal. And there's a foul on Lawson. And that was a frustration foul. Because he couldn't get Baldwin off him. Baldwin finally stole the ball, and then he reached in and fouled. And that's 16 fouls, so VCU starts shooting. Next foul, they've only committed two. And that, that's that's what Kevin brought us said. He said, we foul a lot. He wasn't joking. But if you're VCU, you've got to hit those You've got to hit the free throws. Exactly. Giving, those, giving those chances. Yeah, they're under 50% right now. John's back in for the Rams. And he has it against Turner with 10 to shoot. This is his John's game. Nice move. Yeah, that's his game. Get in the lane and use that those long arms in the, in the low post. John's with 10. He becomes the first Ram in double figures in the game. And now they're pushing the lead up slowly. They're up five and almost a turnover. Here's Miller back in for Morgan State, and he stepped out stepped of bounds. Down the end line. And you've had the sense for about the last five minutes that VCU is eight, capable of breaking this game open. But every time you think that, they make a mistake. Morgan State makes a play and look up and two-point game again. Big possession here for the Rams under 10 to go with a five-point lead. Ace Baldwin with a little Globetrotters move there. Kern back in for VCU. Here's DeLoach. And they're going to get a foul. Uh -huh. That might have been Miller reaching in. In any event, it is the seventh team foul on Morgan State and a one and one. They called it one and one. I thought it was going to be a shooting foul, to be honest. Yeah, the Fisher said he was still looking like turning. he was going, Yeah, it was still turning. And it's the one and one for Jalen as David Shriver comes back in. And these one and ones are just critical for the Rams. They are seven for 15 on the night from the free throw line. Because that allows VCU to set up that press if they choose to, if he makes those makes the two free throws. Right. And the points aren't bad either, and he missed the yeah. first one. So 7 out of 16 now. An empty trip for VCU on that possession. Lawson for three. Ball back tap to Baldwin. Here's Kern up ahead. Goaltending. And goaltender. That was a nice look by Baldwin. Really nice look to Kern. The live ball turnover yeah. resulting, well, not a live one, basically it was a rebound. Well, but it was almost as but, good as a live ball yeah, turnover. because the way Ace moved the ball yeah. to court. Almost got a deflection there. Seven-point lead, nine minutes to go for VCU. Here's Turner against Shriver. 
And we've got a whistle. And Chris Stan here. That's going to be Deloach. He is in the danger zone. That's his fourth. Mike Rhodes not pleased at this moment in time. He thought, I think he thought that should have been no called, but it wasn't. Third team foul on VCU, and it looks like Johns is going to come back in. He is limping a little bit as he's coming to the scores table. Yeah. He was able to, he is limping, but he was able to come in and make that nice bucket out of the low post a minute ago. So Johns is in with Baldwin, Shriver, Kern, and we got a five second count. The defense on the inbounds, that's the second time they've been close to a five second call, and this time they got it. And who initiated that was Ace. Just little thing. See, there's no stat there. He doesn't get credit for a steal or an assist or anything, but he made a big play. Turnover number 19 for Morgan State in the game. It's just they try to get Ace off a ball screen here. No, none's going to go right through that. That's goal pending, goal too. Jay Nunn with the basket, only his fourth point in the game. And I don't think that was going in. And that's why Kevin brought us a little bit upset. But, you know, you're up around the rim. It's instinct. You see the ball up there. You say, I can get it. And you go after it. 7-0 run for VCU has pushed their lead up to nine. Largest lead for the Rams tonight. The only guy in history I think never committed a goaltending was Bill Russell. He just always blocked the shot. Stripped away by Baldwin and off the knee of Isaiah Burke. It'll go back to VCU. That is the 20th turnover for Morgan State. Kevin Broaddus would love to be at the TV timeout here. He can't really afford to call a timeout because remember they used the second one in the first half, so they only have two left. I mentioned trying to weather the storm. He said, we don't want to weather the storm. We're coming to draw rain. We, we, we want to take the game to him, but now you have to weather the storm down now. And, and what they really need to do is get a stop here and get to the TV timeout. Coming up on the eight-minute mark, and VCU with a 50-41 to 41 lead. Here is none. Baldwin. Deflected ball on the floor. Morgan that's, State has it. That Three on one. Is a steal. Miller, Schreiber, the rebound. And Broadus didn't like that at all. He thought that was a foul. Well, that was a big opportunity for Morgan State, and they couldn't cash in. And now an open shot for Baldwin, who drills it. And he may have to call timeout. Double digits for the first time all night. 10 0 run for VCU, who leads by a dozen. And no timeout yet. No, he doesn't want to call it. He wants to get that TV timeout, and he did. Wow. Got the blocking foul call. And they get the media timeout with 7.25 left in the game. VCU up 53-41. to 41. VCU up the largest up. lead of the game at 12, behind a 10-0-1, the last of which, Ace Baldwin. And remember, Morgan State had missed a fast break opportunity at the other end, and Shriver pushed the ball, and good passing there by the Rams finding their best player wide open for a three. And uh, Ace is start, starting, his stats are starting to look more Ace-like. Yes. Uh, as we get deeper into the game. But... That was a key. That was a key turnaround because Morgan State had a chance to cut the lead back to seven, and instead now it goes up to 12. First time in double digits all night. And one thing Morgan State had done a really good jo job of tonight was limiting those scoring ones. They're in the midst of a scoring drought of four minutes and 24 seconds, and they need a basket here with Malik Miller in. That's a Morgan quick State. shot. And a but quick shot and good by Burke. It's one of those where the coach goes, what? Nice shot. That ends a 10-0 run by VCU. Morgan State within nine. Ball with it tonight. Nine points, seven steals, and that assist to that, Brandon Johns. That's what Ace Baldwin does better than anything. He gets in the lane. He's got such good vision. When the defense comes to meet him, he knows who's open. Johns with his 12th point, five assists for Ace Baldwin. Burke again left open, and that's two in a row made by Isaiah Burke. A lot of contact there, and that whatever happened in there left Burke wide open. He was their best three-point shooter a year ago, 
at 41%. He's at 37.5% before tonight's game. It's an eight-point VCU lead. Nice look to Johns. Had it partially blocked. Watkins had it on the stepped baseline out and stepped out. Uh, so another nice pass by Ace Baldwin, but Johns couldn't finish. Couple of made baskets by Burke, who now has 11 to lead Morgan State. They're within eight. Still a ball game. Oh, that looked like an elbow, didn't it? Looked like it. Here's Turner. Hobbs recovers it. The little floater. Got the roll. Gets the bounce. Shooters roll there. And just like that, and is back to six. It was 12 a minute ago going, coming out of the TV timeout. And Morgan State just says, okay, we're good. Inside six minutes to go in regulation. 55-49. The way the Rams have shot free throws in this game, this is a danger zone. And that play has been there all night yep. for VCU. That two-man game and Johns, again, the recipient of the great pass, and he has 14. We'll pick and roll. Stockton to Malone. That's Burke. a tough shot. That was a tough shot. He was off balance. Shriver the rebound for VCU, who are up eight. As we're close to money time here in this game, 57-49 VCU. Baldwin. And he, especially when, when he reached after the contact, Turner, it had to call the foul. But that'll send Baldwin back to the line after Turner grabs his second foul. It's one and one. Bears eighth team foul here in the game for East Baldwin now a one and one. So VCU will probably have to shoot one and one one more time. Ace one for three his last trip. Misses again. Just not Ace Baldwin stuff. Especially with the game close. Yeah. As expected. As we're at money time. And Hobbs trying to get Morgan stay closer. Well, that was a good screen by Miller. He does everything. I don't think he sold any popcorn tonight, but he's done everything else. None up ahead. And that was a risky look. A risky look at that point. And Coach Mike Rose just pointed to his watch and said time and score. Oh, I thought he was saying Hogan's Heroes was coming on soon. <laughs> Check your local listings. You ever watch that show? I do you're, watch it. You're I young. What a, I watched what it a, a few times. Funny show. And there's another turnover. What do we got? We got a quick foul. Got a foul. Yeah. They're going to call the East with the, with the foul. Wow, that was a late whistle. That was a really late whistle. It's a non-shooting foul. It's only PCU's fifth. They could barely hear the whistle, even the crowd, even the, even though the crowd wasn't that loud. No. You still couldn't hear that whistle I'm like talking about. Sometimes officials will wait to see if the guy closest to the play is going to make the call. And if it doesn't get made, then they'll call it. And Another good defensive play as Watkins comes up with the block and Morgan State will keep possession. After none, never establish himself yeah. back in the, in right. the quarter play. I think they're going to change the clock because the shot didn't hit the rim. That's right. Should, uh, Should be, should I think he's, uh, is he saying that or six? Or is 14. 14? Okay. I can't read fingers. Backdoor cut to Burke. And we've got a foul. And Mike Rhodes upset because really that hasn't been a foul all night. And now we get in the last five minutes and suddenly everything's a foul. See, that's one thing coaches want from officials. If it's not a foul in the first minute, it shouldn't be a foul in the 36th minute. If it is a foul, then it is. Consistency is that's what they look they for. Yeah. That's all they want. Burke's got two free throws for Morgan State. That's off. Only their sixth attempt tonight. Four or six from the line. Burke, an 83% shooter. You don't expect a guy as that good a shooter to miss wide left. He's a uh, multimedia production major at really? Morgan State. He wants to, wants to get into this business. Probably take my job and be an improvement <laughs> first night. He wants to be a commentator after he graduates. He made one of two. It's a seven-point lead. Yeah. And Burke gets called for the foul. And this will be the last one and one. 
So both teams will shoot the rest of the way. VCU will shoot double bonus the final 417. Mm -hmm. Rams have already left four points on the board shooting one and ones. And Jay Nunn is back at the line. I should say four points on the court since they didn't get him on the board. This is his first attempt from the strike. Four points for Jaden tonight. That was a big free throw. That was a big free throw in terms of score, but also mentally for BCU. This would be huge. Get him to 50% if he makes it. He got it. Yep. That is two big free throws for none. John's limping off as right. Shriver comes in. He's going to go back to that exercise bike yep. at the end of the bench. He's showing some guts coming back yes, in the he game. Because you can see he's limping. And here comes the press for VCU. Oregon State's done a good job most of the night against pressure. A good ball handling team. Yonkum. That was a tough shot. That wasn't the shot they wanted. And, and that wasn't the foul they wanted either. That is team foul number 10. Double bonus for VCU the rest of the game. Shriver will shoot two. He's the second Morgan State player with four fouls. Jalen Deloach, the only Ram in the danger zone with four. Shriver with six points. 0 of 1 from the stripe tonight. He made two threes for his six points. Got another big one to push it to 10. Lawson now back in for Morgan State to replace Cameron Hobbs. I bet his name's not Calvin. Remember that strip, Calvin and Hobbs? It was very funny. An 11 point lead. Remember, VCU led by as many as 12 in this half. Morgan State cannot afford any more empty possessions, really, at this point. Burke, who was hot in the second half, had back to back threes, was short. Deloach the rebound. Nice rebound there by Deloach. And now Mike Rhodes is saying there's no rush, fellas. Big possession here for VCU. Here is none. To Shriver for three. Oh, that's huge. And Shriver got hurt coming down. He stepped on, I think, somebody's foot. Yeah. That'll leave us to the last TV timeout. Big shot by Shriver now with 11. And it's the largest VCU lead of the game at 14. We're back after this on ESPN Plus and on Masson 2. with their largest lead of the game at 14 64 50 in the midst of a 7 0 run and ace baldwin again the catalyst tonight john yeah as we said in the end before the game he is the engine that drives this car and you see the nice pass there another nice pass there to johns and then huge three-pointer going into the timeout by shriver who came down on somebody's foot and I think went to the locker room. He, he certainly did. came out of the game. And that assist by Ace Baldwin was our Virginia Credit Union assist of the game. Oh, that's why we showed it twice. There you go. There you go. Baldwin with nine points. And seven. John's is really limp. He is. But as you mentioned, he's, he's, he's gutting it out right no, now. He's a tough guy. Shriver's now on the exercise bike as John's was while the play was developing before the media timeout. It's better that Shriver's on the exercise bike than in the locker room. Yeah. But he went into the tunnel and came back out. Yeah. Burt thought about it, now shoots it. And misfired on the three. Watkins up ahead. Goal Another goal again, yeah. The, the goal tens tonight have been easy for the officials. Watkins in double figures with ten. 9-0 VCU run to lead by 16 as we're inside three minutes and an 11-1 run over the, over the last three minutes. We've finally been finishing. 
And their defense has been solid all night. There's another deflection. Miller gets it back. I'd like to find out from Mike Rhodes how many deflections there were in this game. And an offensive foul. Great defense yep. by Jameer Watkins on that entire possession. Made the deflection, and then as Morgan State was rushing a little bit because of the deflection, takes the charge. And now there's no reason for VCU to, to rush into anything. Just get the ball up court and spread out your offense. Oh. Turner gets the steal. Yeah, Baldwin didn't see him coming. And draws a foul. And that that's that's not just not a good play. You got to be aware they're pressing full court. John's first foul. John's gets the foul, but that was Ace, Ace Baldwin's fault. Didn't see the defense coming. He had to know the defense was coming. So Khalil Turner, the junior from Philly. Transfer from Miami Dade College by way of Ryder and Palm Beach State College. So this is his fourth institution. I wonder where it'll be next year. <laughs> his first team all Southern Conference at Palm Beach. Okay, what's Ryder's nickname? Man, I just had it and I can't remember it. I always call them the trucks. The trucks. But they're the Broncos. The Broncos. And the timeout called by Johns to keep possession as Nunn was caught in the corner. The coffin that, that's going to be a TV timeout because it's the first called one of the half. 2.27 to go. VCU up by 14. VCU two and a half minutes away from securing their second win of the season. Right now they're up 14 on Morgan State before that, uh, that two-game classic or tournament or whatever you want to call it. They call them a lot of things. It's it's two games in, in, in uh, three nights is what it is. Starting with Arizona State mm -hmm. on November 16th, and then they'll get Michigan. A little reunion with uh, Zeb Jackson, Jackson and Brandon Johns, as you'll see their old Michigan teammates up there. Is that a, an either-or second game, or is it just Michigan? On the schedule, it says Michigan, but it could be, I think, Pittsburgh as well. Yeah. They're the fourth team in that classic. It got hammered by West Virginia. They there. did. Under 10 to shoot now for the Rams with Baldwin controlling it against Turner. Loves the ball screens. Here's Johns with one to shoot. Doesn't get it off. Nope. Not a good possession for the Rams. Good defense for Morgan State. Malik See. Miller with that deflection causing that shot clock violation. That's what Dean Smith always used to say. The other team gives scholarships too. And Morgan State scholarship players play good defense on that play. And for about 35 minutes, they've been right there with VCU tonight. There was a five-minute stretch where VCU expanded the lead. It's now at 14. They slowly pulled away in this half. As Burke's three was blocked by none. Up ahead is Jayden. And he was blocked by Turner. That was a real good block. And you know what? They didn't need the shot. You know, if he, if he dunks the ball, everybody cheers. But taking 20 seconds off the clock would have been a better thing. It will go back to VCU. Again, instinct takes over in those situations. It's easy for me to sit here and say that. But, but I bet you if you asked none that he would have said the same thing. Yeah, should have, and, and they'll see it on the film back. tomorrow, yeah. yeah. But that's, that's part of why you play these games in November, to learn. And no need to shoot here. No need to shoot. The loads will try it and fouled by Turner. He was, trying, he was looking up for Watkins on the alley-oop. 22 seconds on the shot clock again. They, VCU doesn't really need to score again at this point. But they, they got control of this game by running better offense, by making free throws, and by continuing to play good defense. Got the shooter's roll. Speaking of Deloach. It's like the old baseball saying the 22 hop ground ball up the middle. Looks like a line drive in the box score. That looked like a line drive. Deloach with four, now five. That one looked better. Yeah, but it counts the same. It counts the same. Johns. I know Coach Rose will talk about that in his postgame presser. Afterwards, about the performance that Johns showed tonight, basically playing on one foot. Yeah, got hurt early in the second half. And forcing that miss 
on defense. Limping back. <laughs> but he's in there yep. playing hard. Shriver's still on the exercise bike, loosening that ankle that he stepped on after making that three. I think at this point he's getting his ago. ankle loose for the shower. That too. And for those next two games in Brooklyn. Yeah. Steal by Lawson. John's getting back on defense and scores and a timeout by Broadus. Coach Broadus. It's great hustle there by Johns to get back with one foot. And he didn't foul, which was yeah. a good thing. And made that a much more difficult layup. And went straight up. And good play finishing there. And this should be a 30-second timeout. Which would be one more left for Morgan State. Morgan State. DCU has two. And both teams can take a lot out of this game moving ahead. For VCU, obviously, they needed to, they wanted to play better. Well, and but they, they got tested. Yeah, that's the exactly. Because it, it, if you play a team like Morgan State played the other night, D3 team, and you beat them by 50, and Kevin brought it, said, we, we didn't really learn anything from yeah. that game. We learned from the Xavier game. And this is the same deal. They, they will learn from this game about making mistakes, making better decisions offensively. Getting the ball to Ace Baldwin off of ball screens more often. Uh, and they know that Tuesday night, away from home, against the Pac-12 team, will be, a, will be a tougher test, as will the second game up there, whether it's Michigan or Pittsburgh. They'll see Bobby Hurley and the Sun Devils of Arizona State and Brooklyn. They played a NCAA tournament game against St. John's. A couple of years ago, which was maybe the worst NCAA tournament game I've ever seen. Arizona State won. Was that their first four? Yeah, in Dayton. In Dayton, and I said to Bobby after the game, "You know, that game reminded me of your game against Kentucky." And he looked at me like I was insane. So, what are you talking about? I said, "Well, there were ten players on the court. The court was 94 feet. The baskets were 10 feet high. After that, there were no similarities." Johns drew the foul on Will Thomas. As Thomas is fourth, John's two free throws, 14 points and tonight for the transfer out of Michigan. And Kevin brought us wasn't kidding when he said to us that he was going to, if he went down, he was going to go down swinging. Another missed free throw for VCU. And again, you know, they're going to lose the game, but he's going to play it to the buzzer because it's a learning experience for his guys. Morgan State's next game is next Tuesday when they go to Akron. And that's another tough game. That's yeah. another road guarantee game. One of two made by Johns. He has 15 as we're inside a minute. And it's a 15-point lead. Hobbs for three. Watkins the rebound. And up ahead to Johns who will not shoot it. Smart play. Smart play. And at this point, I think Kevin Broaddus has told his guys not to foul. Standing ovation for VCU, who had themselves a battle here tonight. Really Baldwin did. will shoot it. He didn't want to, or Rhodes and, and didn't want him to shoot it. No, Mike Rhodes is saying to Kevin Broaddus, I really didn't want that shot. Kevin understands. Yeah. That will do it. VCU goes to 2-0 and with a 69-54 win. And that score, it's a 15-point win, but it was much closer. Much closer than that. I mean, it, it was a, a tight ball game until the, those last five minutes. And VCU went on that 11-1 run, took over the game, made some really good plays offensively, finally made some free throws. But their defense was good all night, 54 points by Morgan State. We'll come back and wrap it up from the Seagull Center right after this on Masson 2 and on ESPN+. Plus.